Thyroglobulin antibodies are commonly seen in those with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, although I'll also see them in some of my Graves disease patients. I'm Dr. Eric Osansky, and in this video, I not only will discuss this marker and go over some patient reports, but I will also discuss the difference between anti-thyroglobulin antibodies and serum thyroglobulin. Before I begin, I just want to remind you that the main reason I put together these videos is to help people with different types of autoimmune conditions and other health issues better understand the test results so that they can find or remove their triggers, correct any underlying imbalances, and feel great again. So let's discuss a few basics about antithyroglobulin antibodies. Antithyroglobulin antibodies are commonly associated with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, although it's not uncommon for those with Graves' disease to also have elevated antithyroglobulin antibodies. Antithyroglobulin antibodies develop when there is damage to thyroglobulin. Thyroglobulin is a glycoprotein secreted by follicular cells of the thyroid gland. It's also important to mention that there is a separate test for serum thyroglobulin. Once again, thyroglobulin is a protein produced by the cells of the thyroid gland, and normally its concentration in blood is low. But there are a few factors that can increase serum thyroglobulin levels. First of all, having elevated antithyroglobulin antibodies can cause an elevation in serum thyroglobulin levels. Second, it can also be elevated in some cases of thyroid cancer, including thyroid adenoma, thyroid papillary, and follicular cancer. So in some cases, thyroglobulin is used as a tumor marker. A third reason why serum thyroglobulin can be elevated is because someone has an iodine deficiency. This is an overlooked cause of elevated serum thyroglobulin levels, but numerous studies show that thyroglobulin can be used as a functional biomarker of iodine status. I usually don't rely on this marker to determine if someone has an iodine deficiency, as I like urinary iodine testing, but some feel that thyroglobulin is a superior marker because it reflects long-term iodine intake. So let's take a look at the reference range for antithyroglobulin antibodies. So according to LabCorp, their range is 0 to 0.9 international units per milliliter. And Quest Diagnostics, their range is pretty similar, less than 1 or equal to 1 IU per milliliter. And other labs can have a different reference range. So one of the labs that my patient went to, their range for antithyroglobulin antibodies was less than 115 IUs per milliliter. So what's the optimal reference range? Well, here I have it listed as less than one I use per milliliter, but it really does vary with the lab. As due to different testing equipment, chemical reagents used, and analysis techniques, you can't necessarily compare results from different labs. So while it's easy to say that regardless of the lab someone goes to, they should have a range of less than one IU per milliliter, if they were to go to the lab that uses a range of less than 115 IUs per milliliter, and let's say if their antithyroglobulin antibodies were 30. Now, if you were to compare it to a lab core Quest Diagnostics, that would be quite high, but since that lab uses different testing equipment, I mean, different analysis techniques, then that actually might be acceptable. So let's take a look at some patient reports. And here we see a thyroid panel with both the thyroid peroxidase and thyroglobulin antibodies, which are both elevated. So focusing on the thyroglobulin antibodies, this is from LabCorp, so they use a range of zero to 0.9 IUs per milliliter. And it's not that high, 2.5, but with LabCorp, this is considered to be elevated. And you can see with this lab, this lab uses zero to 115 IUs per milliliter as their reference range. Now it really doesn't make a difference what range they use with a value like this, 1764, would be considered elevated regardless of the lab you used. And the same goes with this report. So we can see that here the range is once again less than 115 and the value here for the antithyroglobulin levels on the bottom here is greater than 4,000. So again, regardless of the lab that's used, this person would have elevated antithyroglobulin antibodies. So you can see how confusing it might be if a person went to different labs. Let's say if the person started out by going to LabCorp and then they got this report and saw that their thyroglobulin antibodies were 2.5, and then let's just say this was the same person, it's not, but if it was the same patient who went to a different lab 
and then they see that their antibodies, their thyroglobulin antibodies are 1764, and they're comparing it from lab to lab, and they think that their antibodies were sky high, or the opposite, where it was 1764 initially, and then maybe they went to LabCorp the second time, and they see it's 2.5, uh, and maybe it did drop down, but you, it's, it's, you can't really make that conversion. So in this situation, you can't compare the different labs. Healthy vitamin D levels are necessary for a healthy immune system, which is why I created a video where I discussed the optimal reference range for vitamin D, which you can check out by clicking a video that just appeared on the screen. And if you have any questions related to antithyroglobulin antibodies, please let me know in the comments below.